I put a couple of bricks under both sides of this to hold it in place and went at the top with a hand plane and some chisels. I ran this through the bandsaw. I just took my time to make sure to push this through and not force it because I didn't want to snap the blade and I wanted to try to keep the cut as straight as possible. You can see a little bit of smoke coming up in different places when it burns and that told me that I was pushing a little bit too hard and I needed to slow down a little bit. Then it was time to hollow out the center of this section. I measured in from both ends of both pieces just to give myself a point of reference and then used a circular saw to make some cuts there. For about an hour I used a chisel and a hammer and just cut out as much of this area as I possibly could. Eventually I tried to flatten out the space as much as I could, but I didn't want to get it perfectly flat, it just wasn't really that important. For the second piece, I did the same thing. I got these pieces in the right orientation and then I made marks on the top and the sides of both ends just to make sure that I was cutting in the right places. Then I took these to the table saw, put the blade at one inch and the fence one inch from the blade. I ran these pieces through and cut out a one inch square on the end of both pieces. I put in the biscuits and reattached these pieces and then added clamps to the flat side to hold them together. This worked pretty well, but it was actually a really weird shape to clamp. I also noticed that some of the bark was coming loose from the bottom where I'd cut it. So I squirted some glue underneath the bark in between it and the wood and then used a strap to hold them together while it dried. Then it was time to make the steel frame for this bench. I used my new miter saw to cut the steel for the first time, and they're not a sponsor for this video, but I have to say I was really impressed with how well it worked. With other saws in the past, I've had trouble with deflection when you're cutting an angle, but this one actually cut a perfect 45. I measured out the short side of this piece of steel to match the width of the log. Then I cut the other miter on the other end. I did a test fit with this piece to make sure that it fit inside the log, and then I just copied its size onto another piece of steel. I cut this one down as well, and these will act as the top and the bottom. I followed the same procedure to do the uprights for each one of the frames, and ended up with eight pieces to make a frame for each end of this log. These are a little bit taller than they are wide, so I made sure to lay them out to make sure that I was grabbing the right pieces. I took the pieces from the top, and then drilled three holes down into them. I used step bits here just to get a bigger hole at the top and a smaller hole at the bottom. I laid out the frame and made sure that all the corners were square before putting a tack onto each corner just to hold the pieces in place. Once I had a nice tack there, I went back and did full welds on the inside and the outside of all of the corners. I like frames like this to be flush on the outside, so I took a flap disc to each one of these welds to get them completely flat. On the inside corners, I wasn't quite as worried, but I used a file just to try to wear them down a little bit. Then I went over the entire thing with the flap disc really lightly just to remove the mill scale. Then I made another frame the exact same way for the other side. I flipped over the log and fit these pieces into the gaps that I had cut. Once they were in place, I measured and marked the center of each one of these and then measured the distance between them. I just cut another piece of square tubing with a flat end and fit it in between these two. It was easier in this case to hold them in place with clamps and tack them before doing full welds rather than trying to use the welding table. This way I knew that they were perfectly square to each other and in the right position. I ground this one down and shined it up with the flap disc just like I did the other frames. Then I took it outside and added a couple of light coats of semi-gloss black. And while that dried I got out the hand plane to completely flatten the top. Actually I didn't fully flatten it, there were some areas that were pretty low and so for those I used an orbital sander just to round them over. You're just going to be sitting on this so really I just wanted to smooth it out. To hold the seat panel in place, I made a couple of cleats out of hardwood just to attach to each end. I cut curves on the bandsaw on each end of these so that they would fit down in the cutout that I'd made on the inside of the log. Once I had them flush with the top surface, I added a little bit of CA glue to them and then activator to the seat. I carefully lined it up and set it down and those pieces bonded immediately. This glue really just held these pieces in place while I pre-drilled holes and drove in some long screws to permanently attach them. Then it was time to assemble everything. The easiest way I found to do this was to set the frame on its side and then wedge the log in from the backside. It was tight enough that it held in place so I could drive in the screws. Remember how I made those larger holes on the top of the frame? That's so I could drive in a screw through the hole in the bottom into the wood. I used pretty long screws so this thing really locked together once I had all the screws in. I flipped it up and put on the top. Then I applied some finish to all the surfaces except for the bark. And that was it. I am really happy with how this thing turned out, especially considering the fact that I didn't even sketch anything to start with. This was all made up on the fly and I just kind of figured it out as I went along, which is really fun sometimes. Thanks for watching guys, I'll see you next time.